tier FX fans. European Open here on Tuesday, 5th of December. We're going to focus on some of the same themes we've been looking at for the last two trading days. This includes Sunday, the Open. Uh, we don't think these gaps are going to get closed. <coughs> Here's the dollar yen chart. The gap is 16. We printed a low of 37 last night. Uh, so you got some cheapies down there at that 40 area, which also coincided with the first liquidity at the open, 44. That's really the first real liquidity, 112.44. Um, we can we like this to continue higher, and we like bonds lower. Based on this tax news, uh, simple as that. Um, we feel like uh, liquidation of bond portfolios held overseas, quote unquote overseas, by U.S. corporates is going to force rates higher, and higher rates are going to lead to dollar yen and dollar swiss which is right here higher you can see dollar swiss couldn't go down at all 40 was the low um, we printed yesterday uh, in the dollar swiss the 67 high we really don't get crazy bullish until 98.82 but we're not looking to break trade this we're just trying to accumulate dollars in this region here. So between 98.50 and 97.50, really 97.60, let's say, because the uh, the close was 97.66. But I don't think this is going to get below 98. The figure. So trying to accumulate your dollars here, pick and choose. Here's the 200-hour line. You might use that. That looks like to be looks like it's being respected. Let's look on this four hourly chart. That line's above. Look there, the daily, the two hundred day mat is right there at ninety-eight. We don't think ninety-eight's gonna break. And the theme from here to the end of the year is to try and accumulate dollars against yen and against Swiss take a quick look at cable just because it moved a lot yesterday so we had this uh, move up in cable when everyone was like oh the brexit deal is done brexit deal is done the sky's falling sky's falling we went all the way up from 134.19 to 135.38 sterling yen broke its years highs by seven ticks uh, sterling swiss didn't break so that, that chart is still intact and then they announced a press conference, and can you, it's, it's just hard for me to believe that they could go to that press conference and be like, no deal. But they did, and we went from 134.90 down to 134.16. I wouldn't say there was some easy money there, um, but if you were paying attention, if you hit any bid, it kind of in an orderly fashion went lower so since then we've been consolidating looks like here at the open they're giving it a little bit of a nudge lower I personally don't know what to do with this now I have all kinds of bias and anger towards the ineptitude of politicians over there uh, and all the drama they're causing about all of this Gun to my head, uh, you'll probably see a further extension. What was the exact low? It was 14 yesterday. Let's have a look at the daily. I don't know. Better just leave cable alone. On the longer term, let's just look at Sterling Swiss. When they do settle all this shit, uh, 133.33. Easy to remember, 133.33. Be there or be square. This is an incredibly important level in the longer term scheme of things. So keep an eye out for it. Quickly, Euro Yen. My colleagues who cover the Asian and uh, Asian rap have been highlighting this. I couldn't agree more. This has to resolve eventually. 
134.50 or 131.20. Obviously, we're at the top end of this range. Uh, I'm not about to pick a side. I'm just going to let the price do that. But breaks above 134.50 should be bought. Breaks below 131.20 should be sold. Lastly, let's take a look at our friend the NASDAQ, who really did not like yesterday. Complete buy the rumor, sell the fact. Uh, first day of full liquidity once the tax has passed. NASDAQ went from 63.80 to 62.58. Um, that's a pretty bearish bar, people. And. This looks like now it's a sell. We've had two of these sort of plungy bars, plus this one. Friday's bar was a plunger, even though it was news. These kind of exaggerated moves down very quickly, I think, signal that the weak side is, is the left-hand side. So I wouldn't go, uh, you know, Go all out through 6246, which is obviously important. But strategic shorts in Nasdaq looks looks appropriate. Less so in the S&P. Uh, you know, we have a level here at 34, which is yesterday's low. We're doing the typical little squeeze up. You could do a nice risk reward trade if you could get short this stuff at around 48 or 50. And then just leave a 65 stop. But NASDAQ's much more powerful left hand side. Oh, yeah, because I keep being asked, let's look at the Bitcoin. Wow, uh, 11,600. Pretty decent vol all the way around here. But now we're holding up. We have all these signals from biggest middlemen in the world, ironically, are now going to uh, provide liquidity in Bitcoin. The irony is just astounding. We're trying to, Bitcoin and, and blockchain is trying to middle, eliminate middlemen. And here we are with NASDAQ and CME saying, use me for liquidity. It's astounding. Uh, anyway, but this should provide support, a floor for this stuff. Um, where that floor is, kind of take whatever today's price is, chop a 30% discount on it, and throw some bids down there. So we're at 11,600. Let's just say we'll take a 3,500. I don't know, 8,000. No, 9,000, we'll say. 8,500, 9,000, it's hard for me to go 30%. Wow, 8,000 is 30%. Somewhere between 8,000 and 9,000, you can probably pick some of this stuff up. Um, I don't know what to do with it here. If, you, if you're if you a trader, trade the intraday vol, trade, technically trades pretty well. If you're an investor, at this point, I would just leave it alone. All right, that's it. I will see you guys in New York Open. Ciao.